Happy Friday. Welcome to Doodle Week. <laughs> Okay, is the camera okay? Sound okay? Good morning, good morning. <laughs> All right, excellent. I've got it zoomed in. I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit more. Oh, hi, Gigi. <laughs> Pandora says hi. Hello, Gigi. <laughs> Well, today we are going to do doodles. You can call them Zen Tangles, Zen Doodles, Plain Old Doodles, whatever. But we're gonna uh, go into <laughs> go into uh, some of the basics and um... <laughs> that's cute, Di. Sweet Gigi. <laughs> okay, so um... oh, thanks. Which one? This one? This one you're talking about? Yeah. This is just a braided cord. And I wrapped it around four times. I'll show you guys how to do this sometime. It's pretty fun. And then this. Let's see if I can get some of them up here on my hand here. Okay. This is, uh, oh, focusing. All right, let's see. Back up. Go slow. Okay, this is not going to be easy. These are miniature doodles. These are actually Zentangles. If it will focus. Come on. Come on, camera. You can do it. Come on. Focusing. Ah. Uh giving me a hard time with this. There's, It's got a dome over it and it's not wanting to shoot. Focus. Okay. Here. Let me see if that no. If I hold it here it focuses a little bit. Alright. So these are miniature Zentangles inside of the Tim Holtz charms and they have the little dome thing that goes on top of them. I don't know if you can see that it has a little little dome on it. But anyway, um, I put miniatures and tangles into each one. Let's see, is there one on that side? Yep, there's another one. So let's see, there's two more over here. See? <laughs> I don't know if you guys can actually see this. I, it's showing up pretty good on what I can see. So, anyhow, um, miniatures and tangles in, in the charm bracelet. One of the things I've been playing with. Okay, so the deal with the Zentangle name, um, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas came up with the Zentangle name. And if you go to their website, Zentangle.com, and it's Z E N Tangle.com. Um, you can find newsletters which has tons of information. You can buy uh, their beginner's kit, which looks like this. This is their beginner's kit. And I've got it really full. Um, it didn't come this full. I've just replenished all the paper um, and stuff. But it comes with two pens, uh, the two micron pens. It comes with the little pencil and, and stuff. So. Um, it has a DVD and a little book, but since I am not, I am not a, a certified Zentangle technician or instructor, uh, I'm just going to kind of show you guys what I do. So, um, but this is this is what you can get from them. It's a nice little box. It's handmade paper. It's a nice little box, and that's their official plug for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. And I've, I think I've showed you guys Zentangles, my Zentangles before. Now the official size of a Zentangle is three and a half by three and a half. And that's what these guys are. 
And I like to work fine. You don't have to work as fine as I do, which I'm not going to today. I'm going to do bigger so you can see what I'm doing. Oops, a little glare. But here's one. I like to do ribbons. So this one uh, has ribbons. And some of these I made up and some of them I didn't. So just depends on uh, my mood, I guess. Here's another one. Oh, and these little frames. Um, these are really inexpensive. I think I got them like a, must have been at the dollar store. But they're real inexpensive and they're the perfect size for these things. Oh, this one's really tiny. It's going to be hard to see. Oh, hey, focusing nicely. Thank you, camera. And like I said, some of these I made up and some of them have official names. So, and I don't remember all of the names. So I may have to, you know, if you ask me something, I may have to stop and look it up. <laughs> Another one. And then these, this is a five by seven. It's it's one of those kinds of frames. Oops, I keep losing my paper out of it. See my paper strip fell, fell out. It's not attached or anything. I just a decorative way to um I had the five by sevens and this is just a decorative way to um display as entangle. So it's all just sitting in there. It's not attached or anything. Um, but I just took some scrapbook paper, cut it five by seven, and I had a scrap of the green left over. So I put that in there. Anyway, here's the Zentangle. Uh oh. I'm not getting it very well. Let's see. Back up. Oh, it's having some trouble. Focusing. And you can't see the shading, unfortunately. Let me see if I can. There we go. Ta-da. OK, now you can kind of see some shading in there as well. Oops, I'm getting a stripe. Where'd that come from? That was weird. OK, anyway, there's that one. And there's this one. It's another 5 by 7 and I think this is from Mariposa, the Mariposa paper line. I'm not positive about that, but I think so. And then, let's see if I can get it to focus again. That was pretty good. Okay, I use this a lot. This one's called Knightsbridge. I use that a lot. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Can do a lot with it. Oops, okay, well, okay, we're not going to focus when we get up that close. All right. Okay, so there we go. Anyway, some easy ways to display. Um, and this one's an ATC. Always took the wrong way for some odd reason. Don't know. But it's like an exploded egg with ribbons. <laughs> and this, I've got it sitting on this little uh, tiny easel. And it, it just sits on the easel like that to display. Yeah, I know, Claire. I know. There's a, you know, there's an argument you know, about that, but hey, if it works for them, that's great. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing something that's a lot of fun. It's fun for them and it's fun for everyone else. So I'm not going to argue with it, you know, it's, it's just fun. Okay. So I've got a book that I started. Now this is the kind that, um, they use, they like to use. And I hadn't had this. I've had Moleskinas, but I had never had a hand book. Okay, let me cover that. But it's called a hand. Let's see if it was going to focus for me here. Come on. Hand. H-A-N-D is the brand of this, draw, this sketchbook. And I got this one at Jerry's Artorama. But anyway, I just took a... a three and a half inch square and went around it 
on each page and just did some strings and um, I'm kind of liking it. It's, it's new, but I'm, I'm kind of liking it. So I thought that was pretty good. So um, some of the basic tangles, let's see, and they're called tangles. I'm, I still haven't got all this stuff straight, but I'm working on it. <laughs> let's see if I can get this up here where you can see it a little bit better. Oh, it keeps wanting to do that. Or it looks like I have Venetian blinds in here. That's kind of weird. Okay, let's do it this way. Here we go. All right. So, oh, well, there it goes again. I don't know why it's doing that. That is really weird. Huh. Okay, real strange. So anyway, basically what you do is you take your square and you draw a squiggly line. What's that's what's called a string. That's what they call a string. I just call it some lines. I don't know why my camera is doing that. That is so odd. Huh. Okay, well I guess it just doesn't like this book. Alright, so we'll we'll <laughs> not do too much with that. But okay, so how do you determine what to draw? Well, okay, if you go online and you look up Zentangle. You're going to come up with bukus of stuff. I mean, there's just stuff everywhere on Zentangle now. Um, there's, they do a seminar where you can get certified to teach their patterns. So what they have is, is a pattern that has a name. Like this one is called Crescent Moon. Okay, this is Crescent Moon right here. See the black, you start out with crescents and you go inwards and it's like an aura. Okay, so that's that's called crescent moon. That's one of their their official patterns. Okay, and it has a name. All right. Um, this one also has a name. Now none of these are shaded or anything because I just started working in this, but this right here is called Holly Bow. That's their pattern name for that. Okay, uh, this one is called Kiko. That's their pattern name, and it looks like kind of basket weave stuff. There you go. Yeah, I'm going to have to focus the camera down here. I think that would be easier. Let me try, let me zoom in and see how that works. Yeah, something's reflecting. I know it's annoying. And anyway, when you get all these patterns, and there are books. Okay, I'll show you the books in just a second. Let me um, let me see what I can do about this. Let me zoom in on the desk. Okay, Let's see if that helps any with the reflection business. All right, which way am I going? There. Okay, I don't know if y'all can. I think I still need to be closer. Let me see if it'll go closer. Do, 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 do. There it goes. All right. Now let me go which way? Other way. <laughs> I'll get it here in a minute. This is the first time doing it this close. Okay. That's pretty good. All right. Now, there we go. Okay. So, anyway, each pattern that they have has an official name for it. Okay. So, when I do something, I don't necessarily think about, oh, I'm going to do such and such a pattern. I just sit down and start doodling something. And if it looks like a certain pattern, if that's the way it's going, okay, and you know, we'll go with that. Or I'll make something up. I mean, it's just, just doodling. It's fun. It's not supposed to be stressing or anything. Uh, it's just supposed to be a lot of fun. So let's, let's just get started doing one basic one, and then I'll show you some books and things. Okay, let me see what I do with my paper. <laughs> and my glasses. Yay. Okay, so I'm just going to take a piece of paper if I can find out where to put it. There it is. All right. And okay, the pen that I like to use, and I, I use these for pen and ink all the time, is a Micron, Sakura Micron 01. And that's what I use most of the time for most of my pen and ink work. Uh, pen and ink work. And I will also use a 005, which is a very, very, very 
fine tip. That's what I do my miniature work with. This eensy weensy tip. Okay. So what I'm going to use today, however, is a much larger pen. It's just a flare marker. Okay, I'm just going to use a flare marker. And this is put out by Papermate. And it's got a fairly large tip on it. So that's what I'm going to use today. Okay. And my nice little box over here. Okay, so when I start working, I sometimes I'll just start in the middle. Yeah, whatever works. Whatever works. And you can use any kind of paper you want to. Um, for my drawing, um, I prefer to use whoops, the Strathmore Bristol Smooth or my absolute favorite, which I cannot get locally, so I have to order it, is Stonehenge. Oh, dear. <laughs> Zoomed in a little too far there for this. Stonehenge. Okay. And this is put out by Rising. Let me zoom in on that. Rising. Okay. Stonehenge paper. These are the two things I use most when I do any pen and ink work at all. I use more of the Bristol because it's available to me locally. So that's what I use mostly. So when you're, you know, when you sit down and, and you start working, um, a lot of times I have no idea what I'm going to do. It's just a blank piece of paper, right? So, okay, well, so let's draw, okay, figure eight. Okay, so we've got a figure eight going. Let's see if I can stay in the camera. Um, I don't know if, if this is close enough for you guys to see. Is that all right, or should I try zooming in a little bit more? Hi, Joycey. Keep forgetting to look at the chat. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to focus on the camera so I can keep myself in it. <laughs> okay. So just start scribbling. I mean, you know, I mean, you guys all doodled at school, right? I mean, you know how to doodle. You doodle when you're on the phone. You, you know, you just sit around and you start making some lines. So, you know, just, just start making lines. Start with a simple checkerboard, okay? And you can turn your paper. I mean, nobody's going to say anything if you turn your paper, okay? And you just start coloring it in. So this is like a checkerboard, and you know, just color it in. Now, it just so happens that this has a name in Zentangling. This is called Knight's Bridge. And, and sometimes I'll go through and make an X in, you know, wherever I want to color in, because if I'm talking on the phone or something, I, you know, I might get a little messed up as to where I'm at. So if I exit, I know that I'm going to fill that in dark. Okay. It's just that simple. All right. So I want to make some circles. So I just start going around this other thing with some circles. And this doesn't have a name. It's just circles. Just doodle, you know, just fill it in. And you don't have to go fast. You don't, you can go as fast or as slow as you want. You can get them even or not. Doesn't matter. You're just pleasing yourself. Something to keep your mind occupied, keep your hands busy. Gives you something to do. And this is, you know, pretty basic stuff. I mean, you know, when you get tired of making circles and start doing something else, you know, make a big spiral. Okay. Just go yada, yada, yada. There you go. Ta da. You're done. <laughs> That's simple. So, I mean, I have to take my jacket off. It's warm in here. Okay, so when you're when you're doodling, you know, I don't like to think about it. I just like to do it. But when you're first starting out, there are things that you know you can do to help yourself get somewhere. If you don't know what to do, if you're if you're really stuck, you don't know what to do. Just uh, I mean, you pick up the pence and nothing happens. Okay, well. Now you know there's somewhere you can go. You can go online, look up Zentangles. Um, they have a newsletter that has, you know, tons of stuff in it. And there again, the zoom thing is going to be a problem. Okay, I'm going to zoom out again. Let me close my pen before I mark up everything, including myself. Let me zoom out again so I can show you some books. Love this camera. This is really cool. <laughs> okay. 
So in their newsletter, they have things like this that you can print out, okay? They have step-by-step -step how to do something. So this pattern is called Swarm, okay? And here's what it looks like when you're actually doodling with it, okay? And then the step-by-step -step is you start by making a line. Then you make some more lines. See how the red, okay, when it's red, it says new step. And then we're here, uh, here. See the red line? Okay, and then we're here. And see the arrows? You just follow the arrows as to which way, to, which way the, go, the trail goes. All right, and you go down, and now we're here. See how you're just making lines of triangles? or a triangle shape with lines in it with no outside edges. Okay, and then that one and finish and you're done. And that's one unit of swarm. It's just what I call it. I don't know what the what if it's a unit or what, but that's what I call it. So, all right. They have stuff like this that you can follow just in the newsletters, okay? Tons of stuff like this. And there's books. Okay, let me show you this thing in a minute. All right. Okay. Books. All right. This one, uh, these are put out by Design Originals. Okay. And there's like five of them. Uh, I've got four of theirs. The fifth one is supposed to be delivered today. I've got an order coming from Amazon. <laughs> so, okay. So in the books, okay, excuse me. I have to move Pandora here a minute. Let her sit in the recycle bin. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So in the book, it gives you basic instructions. It gives you the size, what pens to use, all of that kind of stuff, and where to go. All right. So, you know, here's your basics. Okay. You start out with your three and a half inch square. And if y'all want to go ahead and get some three and a half inch squares cut out of something, that'd be cool. Okay. So you start out, and they say put a dot in the corners and make a frame okay and then you're gonna draw a string which is some kind of wiggly line in the middle of all that and if you look at this you can see that here's the dots okay dots in the corners your frame doesn't have to be straight either okay it doesn't have to be straight so just make a squiggly line in there and each section is going to be a different pattern Hi, Vicki. Welcome home. Good to see you. So anyway, this book will go through all of that. Okay, so like here's here's Crescent Moon. Okay, so on Crescent Moon, you're going to start with right here. You're going to start with the crescents around the edge of whatever your shape is. You're going to make more crescents and you keep going and you can color them in or not. Okay, see? And there's in a different shape. So you just follow your shape. Okay, so I think that's the first one we're going to do in a few minutes. And in the back of the book, okay, it's got, here's a, like an index, but it's a visual index. See how cool that is? And it's in the very back of the book. So all you do is open the back cover and there you go. So you can look up whatever you want. So when you're stuck for inspiration, open this up and, you know, close your eyes and point to one <laughs> you know okay so that's that's a good book to start with okay so they have you know here's here's another one that's got more tangles in it that's two there's three there's four And then um, Sandy Steen Bartholomew is uh, a very good Zentangler. She is certified and uh, she's written a couple of books. This one, and then this is her newest one that I know of, Yoga for Your Brain. Goes into a lot more of shading and stuff. Yep. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah, so. Her books are really detailed, and she was in, well, she's been in, in uh, the Somerset Magazines, and also, I think, Cloth Paper Scissors. 
but anyway, her, her books are, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, I can't really show you the book because I mean, you know, but I can flip through it. Um, but they're really, really good. I've, I've really enjoyed them. Um, and like I said, when you're stuck for ideas, if you go into these things, you can really see all of the combinations, all of the variations. It's just, it's so much fun. I mean, once you get into this, you can sit and zentangle all day. And it doesn't matter where you are. It really doesn't. It doesn't matter where you are. You can do this. Because when I go somewhere, I will take something like this with me. Or something like this with me. Okay? Now what... This is from, let's see, it's, it was an old computer disk. Um, they were blue. I can't remember what they were called now. Anyway, uh, I don't have a favorite. I just, I use all of them. Um, yeah, I, just, I do not have a favorite. Got my chat window messed up. Um, well... I have to take that back because I really like Totally Tangled. <laughs> if I were going to get one, I think I would get Totally Tangled, which is is this one for a first book. I think I'd get this because she goes into a lot of the, you know, she goes into the tools and the sizes and the pens and, you know, there's so much information in this book. It's just wonderful. I think I would get, get this one if I were going to. So that's just my, my recommendation at this point. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut a whole bunch of three and a half inch squares and I've rounded my corners because I like them that way. I always dog ear corners and I hate that. And these I've cut out of either the Bristol or the um, Stonehenge. And then I have a little shading pencil and this is a golf pencil. Okay, my husband brings me these when he gets through playing golf. I get the pencils. <laughs> and then a little short stub because uh, when you're shading with graphite, you don't want to put your fingers in it. And sometimes, you know, you need a really fine instrument instead of a big finger. So anyway, that's what I keep in my purse along with a number one uh, micron. But these go in my purse. Okay. Um, if you have just a pocket, all right, if you're, if you're out someplace, you know, and you've just got a pocket or you have a little tiny purse, you can still carry some Zentangled materials with you. All you need then is one micron pen or any kind of pen. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a micron at this point. If you've got a Bic pen, you can use that too. It really doesn't matter. And then this is an ATC size. See, these are ATCs. So this is an origami pocket. Um, it's, it's, I think it's official name online is origami wallet, I think. But anyway, it's got pockets on the inside on both sides so there's two pockets here and there's two pockets technically two pockets here so here's one pocket and here's another one so you can stick that I mean anywhere you know and this is just made out of heavy paper um, it doesn't even have to be heavy paper but I just chose to make double-sided uh, use a double-sided um, thick paper kind of like the Tim Holtz paper it's really thick Okay, so that's that's a you know pocket-sized doodles. Okay, and I carry you know some of that everywhere. And then you know here at home to store. Okay, like here's here's my ATCs, no corners rounded yet, but here's my ATC stash. Okay, in this little box, little plastic box, and I think this was like band aids or something at one point. I, I don't know. I had a few of these boxes and, you know, us in plastic boxes, right? Okay, so that's that's uh, my carrying around. And if you guys got paper cut yet, got your paper, got your pens. <laughs> okay, because we're going to doodle in a minute. All right. Um, something else I have done. And now I got this idea from... Sandy Steen Bartholomew, okay, and she has a website as well. I got this idea from her. Of course, I made my own. 
get one of these out of here. Okay. So here's a little card, and I did this in Photoshop. Um, made up a basic card, which looks like... Oh, I'll grab this one. Ha. Okay, here's a blank, all right? And so tangle name, and you put the name of the tangle here. I like to put the designer here, okay, whoever made it. If it's an official Zen tangle, I usually put ZT. And then in these little boxes on the back, you know, there's a place for notes. I put the step outs, okay? So from a blank card, I put the step outs on this side and on the front I'll put a sample, a finished sample. And this is just for my benefit. So making the cards in the first place, you're practicing. It helps you remember the steps. And this little box has extra pencils and blank cards and whatever in there. This is one of those baseball collector cards. So, oh, these are ATC size, by the way. <laughs> so anyway, I've got this little book that has a bunch of these in here. And this is a good reference as well. And sometimes I'll take the cards out and just carry the cards and not keep them in the book. I don't have a whole lot done. But it helps to practice. You know, you do your step outs and it helps to practice. Okay, everybody's got their paper ready? Because we're going to do Crescent Moon. Okay, Crescent Moon. All right, this is what Crescent Moon can look like. Oop, focusing would be good. Come on. Well. Okay, well. Anyway. There. Haha. -ha. Okay. There it is. Okay. So we're going to start. See the black areas? We're going to start with that first. And you can put them side by side. You can space them out like this. It really doesn't matter. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do crescent moon. All right. Crescent moon. Okay. I'm going to have to zoom in again. All right. We'll get this zooming down in a bit. <laughs> okay. Zooming in again. Let's see. I don't know how fast it's going to let me go. Oop, and I need to go down. Okay. Let's see if I can get pretty close. Oops, wrong way. Sorry. Okay, how's that? I don't know if it's going to stay focused. Let's see if it'll if it'll stay focused for us. Okay. So let's just draw a simple square. Okay, let's just draw a square. All right. Okay. So what you're going to do, and I'm not watching the chat right now, so you know I'm, I got to watch my paper here. So if you got a question, try to put a Q. Um, Sharpie's good. Any any pen and paper right now is fine, Laurie. Just you know, piece of printer paper and a big pen will, will do fine. Just grab some pen and paper. That's it. Doesn't matter right now. I'll go into you know basic supplies again at the end. But yeah, any any pen and paper is just fine. So just draw a square, draw a circle, it doesn't matter. Just draw a shape, okay? All right. Now, to do your crescents, you just, you're going to just do this. Simple as that. Can you all see that all right? Yes, I'm recording. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so I'm going to turn my paper. You can make crescents all the way around your shape. And if you come to a corner, improvise. You can either go short or just go across it. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you feel like at the moment is fine. Okay, I just want to make sure you guys can see. And, you know, you don't have to be consistent in size or anything unless you just want to. I'll try to move slow because the camera doesn't translate moving fast very well. And I just happen to come out even because that's my eye. 
Okay, I can do that. That's just my eye. All right. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and color that in. And I take my time. I don't like white specks. I fill everything in. But you can do it in a hurry. See, it doesn't really matter. You can do it in a hurry. I probably look like I'm ghost coloring right now, but that's okay. All right, I'm just going to do it real fast. I hate white specks. I'm a perfectionist. I hate white specks, but that's okay. I'm just fine for right now. I'm just trying to hurry. Okay. Or you can just, you know, put X's and you know you got to color that in. Okay. So, there you go. Now, okay, the next thing you do, you're going to make uh, like a shadow line, an aura. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's not touching anything. And you can do this pretty quickly. You see how it's not touching? I don't know if you can see. I guess you can. Yeah, you can see. Okay. See how it's not touching anything? So this line is a line unto itself. So you just want to make this, and you're going to connect it at the end, like so. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Get in there. Okay. And you're going to do another one, and you just keep doing that. And you see how when your space gets small, then you don't make a line there. You just go into it. You make it fit. Okay. Just make it fit. See, let me turn that. Where am I supposed to be? There. Okay, so you're just doing, and you just keep doing this. Okay, and you do another one. And your space inside, of course, is going to keep getting smaller and smaller. But you make it fit till it looks good to you. No biggie. Until you don't have much room left. Okay, now, and you're done. There you go. Make it work. That's right. Not a big, not a big issue. You know, really easy. Okay. So that one is called Crescent Moon. Okay. This one over here was Night Bridge, Night's Bridge. So this one can also be done uh, with different lines. So let me let me make a a shape over here. Okay. So now I'm going to do Knight's Bridge over here. You can see how you do it with pretty even lines. You can curve them if you want. All right, so here's, here's what I like to do with Knight's Bridge. Just start drawing, make some wavy lines. They don't even have to follow each other, like so. Now you're going to make the cross lines. And you can follow the shape of your dome piece, your dome uh, edge, if you want to. It doesn't really matter. So you see how I've got that? Okay, and then just start filling it in somewhere. Start in a corner and start filling it in. So I go across, and you know that one's going to be black. Up oh, now, see I did that wrong. This one's going to be black, not that one. Uh, and then that one and that one and then opposite, opposite. Yeah, see, you can get yourself confused if you're trying to hurry, but that's all right. Doesn't matter. Okay, anyway, and you're going to fill those in. And so what you're going to end up with is a wavy floor. Now, when I come to this one that I put the X in that I really didn't want the X there, watch. You're going to do a pattern within a pattern. Okay, so I can do a tiny Knight's Bridge right in here. And I can fill in like so. And it is now a design variation. <laughs> See how I did that? Just made a tiny Knight's Bridge within the Knight's Bridge, and there's no more boo boo. Yeah, this is supposed to be relaxing, and it is. It really is. I mean, you're, and you're coloring it in. I love the coloring in part. I'm doing it real fast, but I love the coloring in part because it's, I mean, you know how to color. You Coloring is relaxing anyway.
So just color it in quickly. And you know, you can use like I said, any paper and pen. I mean, if you have a napkin, I've, done, I've used a napkin at the restaurant. I always have a pen in my purse, some kind of pen or pencil, something. So you can use a napkin at the restaurant if you want to. Sitting there waiting on your meal and it's taking forever. You're like, da -da 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 -da. pull out. Instead of getting tense and anxious and, and upset, take out your napkin. You know, get your napkin and draw on your napkin. Of course, it's a paper napkin, not a cloth napkin. Right? We don't want the management mad at you. Okay, so that's Knightsbridge. All right. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, lines are fun. Okay, you want to do some lines. Okay, so say you have a rectangle. Okay. And instead of just a rectangle, you want to make it look curved like a column. Okay, so what I like to do sometimes is start making curvy lines instead of straight lines. Okay, so I've got curvy lines. And you can space them out. What that'll do. This is all of a uh, perspective. all how you look at it. Okay? You can color this in at the end. Okay? And if you take a pencil, I'm just going to grab a regular number two pencil. You take a pencil. Here's where your shading comes in. Alright? If you shade the edges like so. And like so. You're going to have something that resembles a cylinder. Oops, where am I? <laughs> okay, there we go. Something that resembles a cylinder. You see how it now looks rounded? So that's the shading. Okay easy to do and coloring in the bottom just adds to that effect because now it looks like it's a shadow on the inside. Can't see what oh, I am now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I gotta watch the camera. Okay. Sorry. So anyway, all I was doing was shading. Let's see if I can get back in the camera here. It's just shading along the sides like this. And you can make it as light or as dark as you want. I'm gonna darken it up a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better. And if you use your stump, let me see if I can grab one of those guys. All right, if you use, come out of the cup, come on. All right, if you use one of these little guys to shade with, you can blend that out even further. So you can start, okay, you've got your pencil down. Start at the edge, go toward the center. Start at the edge, go toward the center. And what that does, it takes that graphite and spreads it. Okay, and I'll show you this close up in just a second. Okay, let's see if I can stay in the camera this time. Okay, now if you look at this side, you can see that this is where I just spread that. So there's there's a little more graduated color. And you look at the other side, that's just the pencil line without smudging it at all. You can see the difference. Okay, so that's where your shading comes in. Lots of fun. Okay. Let's see what else can I tell you guys. Um, let's do another pattern. Let's do oh, let's do floors. This one is really easy, really really easy. Reuse this. Yeah, this is going to be a bookmark. I'm going to fill it all in and everything. That's going to be a bookmark. Got you, Joycey. <laughs> I don't waste anything. <laughs> Okay, so over here on this end, let's do floors. Okay, so let's do a wonky shape. We're going to fill in this corner over here. Okay, let's see if I can stay in the camera this time. All right, there. So what you're going to do is a basic grid. Okay, and you want to do it straight this time. Okay, I've got that a little wonky, but that's all right. 
Okay, you can turn your paper. And now you want to make straight lines this way, or fairly straight. I mean, you know, they don't have to be perfect, but you kind of want your spacing as even as possible because this is supposed to look like a floor. Okay, you got a basic grid. Now what you want to do, see if I can get a center would be good. There we are. All right. Now what you want to do is at each intersection, you want to make another square, but you want to turn it. So what you're going to do here is See that line? Okay, you got to draw a line there, draw a line here, here, and here, and you're going to fill that in. Okay, that's what you have. Let me bring this up to the camera. Okay, see that? At each intersection, you want to do that. Same thing. Okay, each intersection, you're going to make a square and fill it in. And this is called floors. And I'm not sure how it's spelled. F L O R Z, I think. But this one's a lot of fun. This one is not a heavy filler, it's like a, a light filler. And that's what I call them. Because sometimes you're working on something and you need kind of a light area, and sometimes you need a dark area. And then you can think about that. Think about your patterns and how you want to fill it in. So this is what I call a light filler. I'm going to speed up a little bit here. So you just keep doing that. And see it's repetitious and you can, you know, not think about anything. You can think about your favorite movie. You can think about what you're going to have for dinner. You can talk on the phone. You can watch streams. <laughs> right, Joycey? <laughs> so there you go. Just fill it in. Um, let's see. Yeah, Zen doodling. Just doodling, you know? Yeah. Now, like I said, the Zen Tangle is an official name, okay? Uh, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas, that's their official deal. Zentangle.com. Okay, I just want to make sure that I'm not, you know, not trying to take this as mine or anything. This belongs to them. That's, that's their deal. But doodling belongs to everybody. So, you know, just, you can call it doodling. You know, it really, it really doesn't matter unless you're talking to, you know, uh, Bryn Doodling. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Um, good. Oh, okay, Jean. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, for those of you who came in recently, yes, yeah, Zentangle, the word, is copyrighted. Yes, that is that belongs to Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. They're the ones that, that conduct seminars and, and stuff like that. They put out a newsletter, Zentangle.com is their website, and they put out a newsletter. Uh, you can get free patterns, uh, much, much, much information. And if you just Google Zentangle and push images, oh, my, you'll be there all day. You'll be there for a week. <laughs> There's so much to see. It's amazing. There's, uh, I think there's even Flickr groups for, you know, different Flickr groups for Zentangling. So, and of course, there's always been doodle groups. So anyway, we're doodling today. Yeah, lots on Flickr. Yep. Lots and lots. Okay, um, I think I want to take a break from doing this and show you guys some other things that um, I've been working on. Okay, let's see. Um, all right, here's something fun. Okay, so here's an old book. Let me move that little guy. Here's an old book. All right, and I just use this for text. Oh, I'm going to have to zoom out. All right, hold on. Not giving me enough space. Zooming out again. <laughs> I 
this camera is so much fun. Okay, now, all right, it's an old book. I just use this for the text, okay, because I was going to alter it. However, it's not a sewn binding, and by that I mean the binding, the pages are not sewn in. They are glued in. If you can look and see that big, thick thing of glue, that's all that's holding those pages in there. So, yeah, it's eventually going to come undone. So you don't want to put a lot of work into an altered book by, you know, using something that's just glue bound. You want a sewn book. A little rabbit trail there. Okay. So, anyway, you take book pages and you run them through your die cutter. Okay? And then what you do is you doodle on the die cuts. Okay? See what I got going there? Drew in the leaf. Just made some veins. Went along the outside to do a little sketchy. There it goes. A sketchy line. And now I'm just doodling on the on the leaf. Okay? And these can go anywhere you want them. You can use them in scrapbooking. You can use them in your art journals, which is where these are going to go. You can color them or not. You can color them with colored pencils, watercolor, watercolor crayon, whatever you want. You know, because that stuff will be translucent, so you can still see your doodles through it. So, you know, you're just going to doodle on here and uh, whatever makes you happy. And I'm just doing circles, two lines, circles, two lines. I know that doesn't have a name, at least not that I know of. <laughs> okay. See if I can get it to focus again. There you go. See? Just simple stuff. Easy to do. There you go. Very simple. Okay? So that's one thing you can do. Uh, you can do the same thing with, you know, any die cut that you, you feel like. I mean, you know, it really doesn't matter. Any, any die cut you want to use. Okay? Simple, simple. Okay? Um, you can make yourself a little book. Okay? Um using the bind it all or what's that other one uh, cinch or something you know whatever but you make yourself a little book and just doodle on the whole page so this is something that goes in my tote bag or my purse or something and I, I take this traveling so it's it's just something you know you just doodle in there you go mm -hmm, see those So you can make yourself a little book. You don't have to have loose pages if you don't have one of those little plastic holders, which probably you don't. <laughs> but yeah, you can use a little book. Make yourself a little book. You can use folded paper. I mean, you know, anything. Okay. And I've also been doodling in this art journal. Okay. This is one where I did total sprays. I mean, it's just a sprays everywhere. Okay. And I did do some you know, I did do some collage work in there, but I have discovered that there are certain places that I don't want to do anything over the top of. So I am doodling. And you can see here, see that? Isn't that cool? So I've just started going around the edges of the stencil with the black pen. There you go, see? <laughs> free motion quilting oh yes that reminds me I, I put a link up yesterday on Twitter um, where this this lady has free motion quilting and she has uh, this on YouTube she has tons and tons of different patterns that she does free motion quilting with and she's got she's got a solid background color and then she uses white thread to show us how to do the stitch and all of these could be done all of those things could be done as a doodle um, I will post the link again uh, when I get back to Twitter I'll post the link again so you guys can see that but uh, oh it's just fantastic um, I can't remember what her name is I'm sorry I, I just totally forgot about that until um, I saw somebody mention I think Jamie mentioned free motion quilting so I, that reminded me about that but yeah she just it, it's an amazing watching her with that machine it's just an amazing thing and you can do the same thing with your pen you know so all of those and there's over 200 
they can be used as doodle patterns. Yes, it's amazing. Oh, Susan, did you see that? Yeah, she's great. And Jamie, yeah. Lee Day, that's it. That's it, Die. Lee Day. Yes, Lee Day. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's a great, great YouTube. I mean, you're there forever watching her. It's just amazing. You're watching that needle go up and down, and she's moving it. It's just mar marvelous to watch. Yes. So anyway, that's that's also something you can do, especially when you have something like this where you know you've got pages that you like that you really don't want to you know put stuff over too much. And I like to. My favorite thing is the pen work anyway. Um, my, I think my all-time favorite thing in the world is pen and ink drawing. So that's, um, that's something you can do. And you can use, I've, I've been using the Microns. That one's an, an 05. It's a little thicker. And you can change your sizes and use different sizes of pens on the same piece. It doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Okay. Um. I will save all of my little scraps. Okay, I have a box. Okay, I have a box. All of my scraps go in this box. Okay, I've got, you know, scraps cut from, you know, various things. I've got some scraps that are going to be bookmarks. I've got, oh, this is what I'm doing for my knitting group um, this year. Every year, uh, I have been doing a small gift for everyone. I'll take a basket full of whatever. Uh, last year I made, um, what did I make? No, the first year I made little books like this one. Okay, so I made these for everybody. So this year I'm going to do Zentangle bookmarks or doodle bookmarks. And this is, you know, I, I don't know, this is not a standard size or anything. I just, it was a scrap. I was, I was cutting stuff up and this is what was left so these are going to be bookmarks. So I keep all of my scraps in here and I don't waste any of this paper because it's just too expensive. So I've even got I've even got scraps in this band-aid box. <laughs> just happens to fit in here. There's more scraps over here. I just I, you know I just save all my scraps because they'll eventually be used for something. They can be used for inches, they can be used to test your pens, they can be used to test a pattern you're making up, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So let's see what's on this. I keep knocking all my little frames back. That's okay. Um, oh, this this is just where I keep some extra pens. It's one of those little Japanese um, holders. I think it's 99 cents at Hobby Lobby or something. Anyway, I keep miscellaneous on this side. Extra stuff is in this box. Okay, so um, anyway, what you can do with extras, um, test your pens, like I said, make inches, uh, whatever. So, oh, this, oh yeah, this is cool. Uh, this pattern right here is a Zentangle pattern. Um, it's called Paradox. And I know it looks really hard, but it isn't. Okay, let me see if I can find my printout and I'll show you what that one looks like. Uh, let's see. Got all these printouts from their newsletters. Let's see, Paradox, Paradox. Aha, here we go, Paradox, right here. Okay, Paradox is a triangle. Okay, you start with a triangle. Okay, I'm not going to try to point. Just follow the arrows. Okay, you make a line. You make another line, you make another line, and you just keep doing that same thing until you fill it all in. Okay, and this is in their newsletter. You can get this. This, this one is called Paradox. That one's in their newsletter. Really, really cool. You can do lots of things with it. Here's an example. Depending on which way you go when you attach the triangles. You can have lots and lots of fun. That one will keep you busy for a really long time. Okay, so that's paradox, and that's just drawn on, on you know, computer. Uh, it was a scrap paper from printout from the computer. Uh, where to get the patterns? Oh, Zentangle.com. Yeah. 
Show start again. Okay. You start with a triangle. And it's not an equal side triangle. Although you could do it that way. But it, it looks better to me if you don't. But you can. All right. And, oops. Oh, see you later, Jean. Have fun. Wherever you're going. <laughs> okay. Now, when you draw your line, if you'll notice this, this box right here. Okay. See that red line? Let me see if I can get it up here. Okay. Now, you can see the line goes from the point to a space at the bottom. Okay. From the point to a space. And I'm not very good at pointing backwards, but there you go. Okay. And the next one, from the point to the space. So you're going from a point to a space all the time when you're going around. And that's, okay, I'm not getting that in there very well. There you go. And that's how you get to the finish. From a point to a space. If you just remember that, you'll be good. And be consistent. Always go the same way. Either go clockwise or counterclockwise. Don't do both in one, one, one triangle. That won't work. That'll get you a design variation, and I don't know what you call that. <laughs> okay, so that was paradox. That's something to play with. All right. And then you can get to where you do little samplers for yourself just to play around. Now, a lot of these I made up. So this is just a bunch of doodles. And I just took a, you know, a three and a half inch piece of paper and uh, just started making a grid, and in each grid, a different pattern. Okay. Sorry, Lori. <laughs> we can Skype. <laughs> so just doing a whole lot of whatever. And yeah, you can turn the paper. Oh, Lori, you want me to draw it for you? Okay, Lori, I can do that. So you're just playing. You know, just doodle. And this is something that you can have as a personal reference. Uh, this is something that, that you can do, you know, like I said, anywhere. Um, but these can be a personal reference. They're just little samplers. Easy to do. Okay, let me move the leaves. I've already talked about the leaves and the cuts. Okay, and the scraps. Okay, and this is something that, this is my design. I've, I've made this up. Um, <laughs> let me see which one to show you. Probably this one is better. Okay, so I worked at the top of the page instead of, this is what I, I did. This is in a Moleskina, but I um, uh, did a photocopy for a personal reference. Um, but I started drawing feathers, and then I filled in the feathers with. I know this made me think of um, what is that music place that has that dome, uh, where the sound is really cool and it's outside. I can't remember what the name of it is. Anyway, this is this is my design, and I I haven't named it yet. But it's got feathers, it's got the, the shell, and it's got hearts, and it's got leaves. Uh, it's got four elements to it. So, And you can do, of course, you can do lines, and you can do cross-hatching. You can do just anything to fill it in. But that's my design, and I've, I have to give it a name sometime or other. And, you know, you can just start drawing it and fill it in and just go everywhere. It's just one of those things. Okay. Showed you that, showed you that. Okay. So also what I, I'll carry in my purse are these little um, these little books. Okay. And I just start filling in pages wherever I'm at. Like if I'm waiting on somebody or, you know, in a doctor's office or, you know, something like that. Oh, okay. Bye, Di. See you later. So anyway, there you go. And this right here is what I call a pattern within a pattern because the pattern is the stones, which kind of, oh, here it is right here. I mean, I don't know if this has an official name or not. Oops. Blurridge. Sorry. Thank you, Pandora. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So right here. You can see it looks like stones together, okay, or a cow, or whatever. So that's this, right, whoops, right here. 
And I've just, instead of filling in the stones, I've just done different patterns in the stones. So that's just doing, you know, a pattern within a pattern. It's more fancy doodling. Okay. All right. So I carry one of these little books and, you know, I just, I use these for all kinds of notes. You know, just start one and you can go for it. So I keep one started all the time. And then, of course, there's other notes in here as well. So those, let's see, here's another one. This one has all kinds of things in it. Um, this one has most of my uh, knitting, I almost got knitting pattern too. I was designing knitting. But this has a lot of just a little trying the patterns out, you know, when I find something I like. Oh, more knitting. Hang on. Okay, like this page over here has a lot of, a lot of trying things out on it. Don't look at the knitting. <laughs> Not that you could read it anyway. Chicken scratch. And then I get further in and I mean this these little notebooks I carry in my purse because you know they're so handy just to write things down in and and I'll stay in one place. So this stuff, I don't know that this is an official thing or not, but this is something I was playing with. And then I drew some like olives and some little pillow things. I don't know, just messing around. Um, this one is called, this is an official pattern. It's called Says. Don't ask me why, but it is. And that's what that looks like. You start drawing circles and then fill in. And then this down here, this is really cool. I have a lot of fun with that. Um, it's called striping. It's just very simple. But, you know, it can be in a square or not. It can be in a line by itself. And these I saw online, and, you know, you just mess around. It's a lot of fun, especially when you get to the shading part. See if I can point with the pencil. See, the shading is right here. Let me see if I can get that without blurring. Up. But you can see the shading. Also, the way you draw it and the shading gives you the 3D look. And that one's called striping. And you can find that online. Um, but yeah, there, there's just so many things. I mean, I started out messing with this because I was wanting to do some hair. Okay, so I started out messing with this and it just kind of went everywhere into all kinds of things. <laughs> and then I was messing with Crescent Moon and came up with my own variation of Crescent Moon, which is this right here. And then this one, oh, this is a cool one. This is called uh, Shattuck. Don't ask me why. Here it is written out. Whoops, wrong way. There. That's what that's called. And you can see the shading on the edges makes it look curved. But you can take that one in all kinds of ways. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Okay, um, and here's some more just official Zentangles I was practicing. And oh, these are just, I did two sided um, reference. This is for my own reference. Oops, wasn't working too well. There you go. And I've cut flips on each one where there's a pattern on the other side. So here's all my reference. See, here's my references, my little samplers. I just copied them and stuck them in here. And I'm, see, I'm playing with Shattuck again. I mean, there's so many ways to take that one. It's just so much fun. Oh, this one right here is really easy. You just keep going in a circle, round and round and round, until you fill in whatever you got. Okay. Uh, and there's some more playing around in my hand. And I think that's about the end. Oh, wait, there's a couple more. Okay. Oh, this one is called Spirals. I haven't shaded that one yet. But I was trying it with a feather. See if that would work. And let's see. Yeah, here's some more. Oh, more Paradox. Where uh, they had filled in the center. Instead of going with all triangles, they filled in the center. Whoops. Paradox. 
Okay. So I will I will do paradox and uh, what was the one you wanted to see, Jess? Uh, striping. Okay. Is there a helix? There could be. There could be. I mean, there are tons of these patterns. Um, there's also a website where she's got them all listed. Um, and there's, I don't know how many hundreds of patterns there are now, but everyone is, is making them up. Oh, okay. More class notes from something else. Uh, oh, there's a couple more Zentangles there. It's trying to get it like weaving. And then, oh, this is cool too. Look at that one. <laughs> yeah, tons and tons. I mean, there's just so many. Let me see, here's some more over here. So, yeah, this little book. I mean, I, this is my little practice book. I just, I keep it in the purse. And if it's not in my purse, it's in my daily basket. And my daily basket, okay, rabbit trail. My daily basket is where I keep my cell phone, my PDA, an extra battery charger, my bars, uh, mirrors, glasses. <laughs> That's my daily basket. It it's, uh, usually stays on my desk, but at night it stays on my bedside table, so I have everything in the basket. So I know exactly where that stuff is. My glasses, my phone, pen, pencils, scissors. Okay, so all right, that's this. Now let me let me pull up striping. Pull back up striping. Where is it? I need my reference here. I can't remember all this stuff. I mean, you know, there's so many. It's just impossible to remember. Okay, so I'm going to show that one, and I'm going to do paradox first. Okay. So here's here's the reference for paradox. Okay, that's a book. Going to be a bookmark. I don't want to mark on the back of that one. Let me get a tile, and they call them tiles, so let's just have it now. All right, so let me pull out a tile, okay, and we're going to do some paradox. So normally what you do, oh, I need to zoom in again, don't I? Okay, let me zoom in again so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see, zooming in. Oh, it just darkened. Okay, so I'm going to back up there. Okay, that'll have to do because it, it got darker for some odd reason. Don't know. Okay, so we're going to do paradox. So to do an official an official um, a car, a tile, all right, so they say put your dots in the corner so you can put a dot in the corner. You don't have to actually see them. Draw your, you know, draw your frame. It doesn't matter, you know, what it looks like. Then you're going to draw a string, okay? So you can do this however, which way you want. Okay, like so. Okay. So that's your official start. Okay, then you put down the pencil. All right, and then you pick up your pen. So I want to use, yeah, let me go ahead and use the number three. <clears throat> That'll show up a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to fill paradox right here. I'm going to go for paradox right over here. Okay, now you want to make a triangle. Okay, so I've got two lines over here already. So here's one line, here's another line. Okay, here's my third line. So there's my triangle. Can you guys see that okay, or do I need to zoom in for sure? Can't see? All right. Let me zoom in. I wonder if I turned that on, if it would help any. Now it's going to cast a shadow. Okay, I'll turn that one off. Okay, let me zoom in. Yeah, I was afraid that might not be close enough. It got darker, but I think you'll be it's still able to see better. Okay, I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Whoops, wrong way. Okay, I'll just move my paper just a little bit this way. Okay, how's that? Is that all right? A PDA, Jess? <laughs> Personal Digital Assistant? Um, <laughs> before cell phones. Before the cell phone got really cool. 
I mean, I can read eBooks. I can play Scrabble. Uh, it's an electronic device. It's a, it's a computer. So, okay. So, uh, that rat, little rabbit trail there. All right. <laughs> Jamie, public display of affection. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, Jess. It's your brain. Yeah. <laughs> At least it was for me. You put in your appointments. You put in your list. You play games. You read your eBooks. You can even watch videos on those things. Yeah. Uh, yes, there can be a loop, Joe. Um, can you see? Okay, let me let me. Um, if you can see the pencil lines there, see that. But for paradox, you try to use straight lines. Uh, you can, however, start the paradox, like in this loop right here. You could start a tiny paradox in here from the center and fill it outwards. And that way you can hit and fill in all your area. Yeah, basically just like your phone, yeah. Your phone's a little bit better because you can actually make calls with it. <laughs> Scribble around the page first. Yes. Yeah, you see I made dots in the corners. Okay. I drew my lines all the way around to make the frame. And then you do the scribble. And the scribble, they call it a string. Okay, so you, then you do your scribble line. And that's how you get all your sections. <laughs> Egg salad sandwich. Dee Dee, ooh, that's going to be a toughie. <laughs> that's going to be a toughie. <laughs> Okay, have you got have you got that, Lori? I'll wait for Lori here. <laughs> yeah, Dee Dee. <laughs> I think you need a spoon for that, Dee Dee. <laughs> Is everybody with me so far? I'll wait for you guys to respond here. Yeah, I might be going a little fast. You gotta slow me down, sorta. Okay. <laughs> With the tour fluffy, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So if you've got got a square, basically a square, got your frame drawn around it, draw your scribble line to make your sections so that you've got sections to work in. Okay. Yeah, okay, just pick pick a section if you've got some straight lines that see how my line is straight here and here I would pick that section to do this in okay Joycey <laughs> so yeah you can just put it anywhere just just so you have a start okay Everybody with it? Okay, good, Jamie. I wouldn't start on a curved line for doing the... No, uh-uh. No, if you've got curved lines, start in the middle. Or to one side. But yeah, you want to be able to do this one, which is called Paradox, with straight lines. Yeah, Paradox. Has the triangle you drew got a border around it? No, it's just a triangle right now. It's inside, but it is inside of a section. Okay? It is inside of this section. Okay? See that section? Whoops. Sorry, a little shaky. Yeah, well, see, I've never taught this before, Jess. This is this is new <laughs> for me to teach. I've taught lots of things, but not this. Um, it doesn't have to be a triangle shape, but it helps when you're first doing it. Okay? All right, so what I've done is on this line and on this line, I have just went ahead and darkened it 
so I can make my triangle, okay? And I added this line right here. So this is existing, this was existing, and I added this. Does that help? No, we're going to do lots of triangles together, and we put them together. We're filling in. Looks like a um, spider web. Okay, Dan, you still with the spiders. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Metal looking thing in the binder. Oh, uh, no, I haven't taught that yet, um, Jess. Uh, I'm supposed to do a YouTube on that. So I'll, I'll eventually get it done. I've just been a little busy. Okay. All right. So you've got your basic triangle. Now, your first line is going to go from the top point down to the bottom but you're going to leave a space so let me draw this one all right watch carefully now I'm at the top in the corner going down I'm at the space okay let me show you that what I did see that line so there's my top at the point going down to a space okay all right, now, next step. And yes, you can turn your tile from the point down to another space. And I'm going clockwise around the triangle. You giving up, Jess? <laughs> okay, so I've gone from the point to space. Okay, you're just going to keep doing that same thing. Oh, good idea, Judy. I probably know who she is. All right, from the point to the space, and now I've run into my first line. Okay, here I am, right here. Oops, sorry. Let me get back. <laughs> okay, right here. So I've gone from the point to the space, and I keep getting off camera. Can't decide which way to go. There, right? From the point to the space and now I've run into my first line. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to draw this up here. Here, let me see if I can put it on the book and maybe I can hold it. Oops, blurridge. Okay. All right, so I'm going to try it up here. All right, so from this point, and this is going to be a little shaky since I'm up here, to the space. Point to the space. Point to the space point to the space, point to the space, point to the space. And you see how you can get a uh, fluidity going there. You don't even have to pick up your pen. Okay. Could you see that or was I off camera or in the way? Or <laughs> Okay, all right, now comes the, the next part where you have to do your second one, okay? And it's your own decision as to where you're going to put it. Okay, so since I've got one there, I think what I want to do is, and you want to have them side by side when you're doing this. Um, to put one over here is not a good idea. I mean, you probably could do it that way, but it wouldn't come out as well. It wouldn't have the fluidity that this is going to have when you do them side by side. And that's just something I figured out. I didn't read that anywhere, but that's something I figured out for this. Okay, so I want to make another triangle, so I think I'm just going to make my own triangle, but I'm using that side, okay? All right, so I have another triangle. So I have to decide, and I'm still want to go clockwise. Okay, always go clockwise. Be consistent. So I'm going to do, I'm going to this point. So I'm going to find a space, point to the space, point to the space, and I'm just going to keep the same fluidity, point to the space, just keep going. See, so you have no more room. Okay. 
And that's my second triangle. And you can see how cool that looks. See that? If you'll notice something happening, even though we have straight lines, it looks like it's curving. It's kind of like string art. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Okay, so I'm going to do another one. Okay, so I'm going to put a triangle. I think I'll put one over here. All right, so here's another triangle. All right, point, space, space, space. Just keep going around. Fill that one in. Okay, and there's another one. Okay. All right. And you can keep going. I want to make it long one this time. Fill that space in. All right. Point, space. Keep going. So you see what I have now? It looks like a steeple. <laughs> and you just keep going that way until you fill in your whole area. Anybody got any questions? <laughs> uh oh, paradox. Paradox. And this is in the zentangle.com newsletter. They have a whole section where they have all the newsletters. Yeah, I know. Once you break it down, it's really pretty simple. Yep. Okay, so does it, do you want me to do another rectangle or another triangle or have you got it? Okay, Joe has a question. When you make the second row of triangles, do the corners have to match up? Uh In my experience of doing this, if one corner touches, it's a good thing. So like, for example, if I'm, okay, here's my long triangle over here. Okay, and here's the, the point where this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle touch right here. If I make a line here and here, that will give me my next triangle. Oh, sorry. Back in camera. Okay. So here's where they touch. This triangle touches here, this one touches here, and this one touches here. So if I make a line from here to here to here, that's my next triangle. Got it? Um, you can move, okay, like I said, you have to be consistent. So when you're filling in an area, you want to kind of keep going the same way. So within each triangle, you want to either go clockwise or counterclockwise and keep doing that forever. Don't change the way you do it, okay? Because uh, you'll get yourself confused if you do. So if you know you have to do this and you always go clockwise within a triangle, you're good. Just be consistent, okay? Um, when you're filling in, you may not have a choice sometimes, but if you can fill in going one direction, okay, so I, I went this way, so if you can go this way, you may have to come this way. So it doesn't really matter which direction you're going and when you're putting a new triangle in, as long as you're consistent with where your points touch. At least that's my experience. Um, Okay. Bye, Jamie. So be consistent within each triangle because when you're filling in an area, you may not have a choice which way you go. Just remember that one side needs to always touch and it helps if the point is the same as well. So this point at three triangles touch at this point. So if I made another one here, that would look really good. If I made it out here, that would not. You'd ruin your consistency and it wouldn't flow. At least not for me, it didn't. 
I tried that. It didn't work. <laughs> so try to keep them together. Try to try to fill it in sequentially. Um, if if you know what I mean. It needs to flow. Okay. Any other questions about paradox? Waiting for the lag. No questions. Okay. Now we're going to go on and do another one. Okay. Joe wanted to see stripes. Striping. So we're going to do this one. Okay. Now this one you can put like this is in a square. Oh, I guess you can't see that. Okay. Here, let, let me do it this way. I will get the hang of this camera angle thing one of these days. I was never very good at that game where you drive cars. Oh boy. I always went backwards and crashed. Uh, the guys always laugh at me. Okay, so you can do it in a square. All right, I'm a little shaky, sorry. Okay, or you can just start it on a blank page and, you know, balloon it. I mean, whatever you want to do. So, okay, do you, do you want me to finish the paradox because I mean I think I've given you all the basics right and you can go ahead and finish it sorry I just I just want to be be sure I get this in here because you know at 12 o'clock I'm gonna have to go so <laughs> I've got half an hour so I'm just trying to get this other one in here we can always go back if we have time yeah this one is really really cool okay so when you start this one okay see how it's in the square oh focusing would be good Come on, camera. Let me try this. Go up and back. Up and back. There you go. Okay. So if you can see, oh gosh, I'm so shaky. Sorry. I need to eat something, I guess. I got a bar right here. Um, you can fill in the shape any way you want to. So what you want to do is make an arch somewhere and follow it. See how I did in the corner here. Okay. Start with this. All right. So we're going to make a shell shape in the corner. Okay. So let me see if I can put this in the camera. If I can prop it on this box. You can kind of see it. Uh, not really. Nope. Mm -mm, not working. Okay. Well. Okay. How about that? All right. So I'm going to pick a corner here and just start. I'm going to start over here. Okay, so here's my corner. All right, right here. Okay, so I'm just going to make a shell. So you're just going to make some curved lines and you're going to touch one side and touch the other and cover that space. Okay, until you've got what looks like an echo. Oh, bye Joe! Zebratology. Oh, <laughs> that's cute, Lori. <laughs> Angelfish. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I like to fill in the one that's in the very corner and then go out from there. So, you know, you fill in this one and you fill in this one. And when I do a shell, I like to have the outer one be dark. That's just me. I like to have the outer one be dark. Okay. And I hate white spaces. It bugs me, but okay, I'll leave it. I'm just I'm trying to hurry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, the paper is three and a half by three and a half. But I mean, you can do these any size or on any piece of paper. It, it you know it doesn't really matter. But that's just the official Zentangle size. Okay. Three and a half by three and a half. So what you end up with basically is a three by three. Uh, tangle when you get finished. Unless you go all the way to the edges, which you can do too. Okay, so here's my first shell. Okay. Now, I need to turn my paper and I want to make some curvy lines doing something else. So, you can either go into another corner. Okay, let's go into this one over here. Everybody still see okay? Alright, good. Make sure I'm still in, in the camera there. Okay, 
So go into this one over here. Same thing. Do your curvy shell. All right. I don't know. I don't want to make that one quite as big. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling it in. And I want one more line. Okay. Like so. Okay. So now I've got somewhere to start filling in. Okay. So I'm just going to make... See, I've got a curve. My pencil line is a curve right here. So I'm just going to follow that for a second and just kind of do this. Where it looks like a couple of bananas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then I'm going to want to make this a smaller area in here. So then I'm going to color that in. And I'm going to color this one in. And I'll put one more on the outside. And you can vary the thickness of these lines as well. Like so. And like I said, I'm not an official, you know, Zentangle instructor, but I'm just showing you how I do this. Best I can. Okay, so, um, and you just start making stripes, okay? Just take it any direction that you want to go. You can do some straight, okay? And you start filling those in. Because the magic comes in when we do the shading. So I take just take your stripe sections and just go different ways with it. Filling in your space. Just take it different ways. Here's another corner, so I'm going to come out from this corner. My thumb's probably in the way. Like so. Fill that in. Fill that in. And normally I take a lot more time filling in, but like I said, I'm trying to get all this in here so I can get to the shading part. Okay. And then one more section. I think I want to take the stripes this direction. Like so. Okay, so now I've got my section all filled in. All right, now, when you do your shading, okay, let me see if I can um, close your pen so they don't dry out. Where's that pencil? There it is. You roll behind the box. Okay, so I'm going to try to hold this up so you can see the shading as well as when I'm doing it. Okay, so let's try, let's try it, uh, this well okay maybe I can just shift alright so when you're shading okay you basically want to go around the outside okay let me see if I can get back in the camera <laughs> this is so weird okay so I'm gonna shade here and I'm gonna shade here because I want it to look like it's curving down Okay, and I would normally take my stump and blend it out. Okay, and at each one of these where it curves down, I'm going to put your shading. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on this edge over here. Put the shading in. Okay, so you can see where I've got my shading going. Am I doing it dark enough so you can see it? Okay. Um, all right. So here's here's another shell shape. So here I'm going, filling in shadow, and over here, and I'm curving this one because this curves, and if you have a curve, the curve, the shadow is going to be a curve as well. Okay. This is a straight line. Okay. I'm going to shade right here because this curve is over this one perspective wise and you want to shade the edges okay I hope you guys can see I'm not out of camera okay good okay shade the outside I'm doing this quick this is by no means as well as I like to do them okay and this one you're going to do the edges here as well and I'm trying to do it dark enough so you can see 
Okay. Now let me show you. See that? And I would take my stump and, you know, could take more time and, and fiddle with it. And you see the bottom there too. Can you see all the shading? I can see it from here. Hope you guys can. So basically what you've got going on is a lot of shading where your layers, where it looks like let you've got layers. And we all know about paint layers. Well, it's the same thing when you're doing visual layers. Okay, or virtual layers, same thing. Okay, now that's that's your basic striping. Now to get it to balloon like this, okay, let's let's do let me get another piece of paper. Because I wanna I wanna show you the just starting it in the middle of a piece of paper. Okay, here's a, an ATC. Okay, here's an ATC. All right, I'll get my pen back out. Okay, so when I'm doing this, see if I can get the balloon. There you go. There, okay. I want this in the camera. I was trying to get that in the camera. Okay, so I'm going to try to duplicate this right here so you can see. All right. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to start with this little this little area right here, and I don't want to make a pencil a, a pen line where this dip is. So I'm going to take my pencil, and I'm going to make a teardrop shape. All right. The next part. This part right here is the part that's going to look like it's really up in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and make that, and it's going to go around like so. And then the other part is going to come back around like that. And then the front area will be something like that. Okay, now I can erase later to get that effect. I can erase those lines right there. Okay, so. Basically, what you want to do is get your curved lines. You're not making any straight lines. It's all curved. Okay? So I'm going to make my shell. And I'm going to do the wider stripes. It's going to go faster. So I'm basically going to do a shell right here. Okay? And in this next section, what I want to do is continue that line. However, if you can see how it looks like it's raised, okay, so when I do my curved line, and I hope you guys can see this, I'm going to act as if there's a dip there. And I'm going to bring the line up. I'll show you this close up in just a second. But you can see. See how I'm continuing my line, but yet I'm making it look as if there's a dip there. See how I'm curving those? Yeah, technical terms, yeah. <laughs> Gets the point across. <laughs> okay, all right. So I'm going to continue that. Continue these lines right here, this way and this way. And then I'll have to make some new ones up at the top. So what I might want to do is at the very tip of the shell is make another line like so. And then for this part over here, I'm going to just continue and make some more lines. And everything is curved. See how that goes. Okay. Now, this section right here is a still a continuation because we want this area to look raised. So this is still going to be a continuation. So I'm going to do another arched curve line off of those lines like so see that okay so I'm just going to keep doing that okay now the back one is kind of an entity on its own. It doesn't have any continuous lines. So you can just do that by following that outside curve. Okay. Now, when you're going to color in the lines, you make up your mind where you want your lines to go. 
So if I wanted to color in these lines, you just do it. You just color them in. Keeping your curves. Okay, and you just keep doing that. And I'm going to do these real fast. This is not Zen like when you have to do it this fast. <laughs> but I'm trying to get this done. I want y'all to be sure to see everything. The shading is the real important part. Okay, just keep doing that. And you can, of course, use a bigger pen, you know, a bigger nib to, you know, do this part. But if you like to color, which I do, I like always like to use my small ones. That's why I use so many of them. <laughs> okay. And then um, this one, I think I want to go ahead and do like so. And I don't know what kind of paper this is, but it's much thinner than what I've been using. And the ink is not as black on this particular paper. That's something else I'm kind of picky about. I like my black to be black. So on certain paper, your pens may not be as black as you'd like. So then you have to kind of fiddle around until you find what you like. That one I can go all the way around. Okay. Now let's do the shading. Okay. This is a kind of the uh, critical part of this. All right. Okay, so when you're shading, okay, if you can see, if I can get keeping the camera, if you can see right here, there is shading. Here there is shading, but there is not shading on both sides of that line. Okay? You want to keep the shading away from the part that you want us to stick up to uh, look like it sticks up if I don't know how to explain that any better keep the shading away from that thinner portion that looks like it's sticking up more I know you can see this but are you understanding what I'm trying to get across <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shade on this shape I'm leaving that center area and I'm going to shade over here on this side so there's no shading on this set its center section of this area because that's the one that I want to look like it's raised okay like that one okay sticky uppy part is casting a shadow on the bottom layers exactly Jan <laughs> exactly yeah the raised part is casting shadow on the other parts that's right that's exactly it okay so put your shading over there and you want to put your shading over here and sometimes you want to get a thicker line of shading than on, than on others it just depends on what you want it to look like okay and then over here I'm gonna do the shading over here All right because I want it to curve and I kind of want this to look like it's coming up over and going down so I'm gonna shade the back of this one over here and I'm gonna shade it as if this is really sticking up and this casting a big shadow over here okay and then I'm gonna put a little shading on the outside because I want it to look like it's curving down Okay, now you can see the basic shading lines of that shape. 
And let's see, there's one more area right here that needs just a little bit of shading because this has a bulge to it at the end. It looks like it's a, a curve, like the end of an egg, to me anyway. And so I want to shade that just a little bit. Okay, so that's basically how you get to here. And of course you, you know, take your time, take the stump, blend it out. Oh, okay. Hi, Dale. <laughs> so that's how you get your 3D shading. Okay, any questions? The up is the brightest, the down is shaded. Pretty much, Lisa, yeah. And I've been drawing since I could hold a pencil. So, I mean, this shading is my observations over time. Um, and I know that um, Sandy Bartholomew will go into shading in a couple of her books. They, there's some shade about shading in there too. So that's, that's even more information. But anywho, there you go. Okay, no more questions about that. All right, of course you can always twi uh, tweet me. <laughs> okay, so um, basically that's that's a little tutorial on, on doodling, zentangling, zen doodling, doodling, whatever you want to call it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I like to keep some in my purse. Um, I keep extras ready to toss into a tote bag. Uh, lots of things you can do with that. I keep a, here's my drawing box. I keep my extra pens and stuff in here. This often goes into a tote bag. See my microns. This is one of those um, old VCR tape boxes without uh, the sticky up parts. I know I've showed this before. But that's what I keep my pens in. And I keep it sitting either flat or on its side because the way to store <laughs> the way to store these pens is laying down so um, I try to keep it laying like that and all my pens uh, you know laying flat um, let me see oh there's one more thing I guess I could show you um, for display if you take a journal I'm gonna have to back this thing up again oops blurridge sorry let me back out because I know you can't see what's going on here. Come on, camera. Come on. Oh. Pandora. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she really helps. Uh, I've, I've just got a, a journal I made. Okay, it's just a blank journal. It's not even decorated or anything. And I've just started putting some of my... Uh, practice pieces in here. Of course you could display, you know, real ones too. I mean, you know, finished ones. And um, that's a good way to display them. And always sign and date everything you do. That's 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 a pet peeve of mine. Sign and date everything you do. If I don't sign it, I at least date it. Because I mean if it's in a book you know, I know it's my book. My name's in it somewhere. So I just date it. You know, just write a quick date someplace. So that's that's basically it. Um, <laughs> you're welcome, Joyce. So it just takes a little practice. Um, and, you know, you got to have something in front of you. It's like if you go to the website and you look at the newsletters, you know, and you, you print out some of these things. You know, I mean, they don't print out like this. I, I put them in um, Photoshop and, you know, 
get half the page and half the page. So, but you know, you can print them out straight from the newsletter as well. You don't have to have Photoshop. I just do that because I like to fold them and put them in a book. <laughs> So yeah, there's there's all kinds of all kinds of tangles. They okay, they have okay. Here's like paradox. This one is poke leaf, and these are all in the newsletter. Pepper, it's kind of like a peppermint candy, you know. I thought that was kind of cool. And this one is called hybrid, hybrid, hybrid. H i b r e d. A lot of these I don't know how to pronounce. <clears throat> My throat's going. This is the second page. This one's a little more complicated looking, but it's easy to do. It really is. I mean, look how cool that is. Is that not cool? That's almost as much fun as Paradox. And drawing it's really nice. I love that one. One of my favorites. And then there's curvy ones. This one's called Opus. And this one's called Hurry. Don't know exactly why. There you go. Be better. This one is called, what is that called? Um, good question. Don't know. <laughs> Didn't get the name on that one. Sorry, guys. But it's in the newsletter. You know, all these are in the newsletter. So have fun. Go explore. See what you can come up with. Happy tangling. Happy doodling. <laughs> Jean's on the bus. Hi, Jean. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. I'm going to go. I need to put some food in this body. And uh, I will see y'all on Twitter. And I will see you later at Barb's. Barb will be on in about an hour. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming. <laughs>